Hello everyone. This is going to be our second lesson on fields. Uh, previous lesson was general information on fields and introduction to the gravitational, electric, and magnetic fields. And then I did go over some calculations for gravitational fields. So this one here is going to be on uh, electric fields and magnetic fields. And again, there are some calculations in this presentation for the electric fields. I'm going to start off with the data booklet here, though, just to remind you of a couple of things, the information that you can find. So this table here, all of the prefixes for the different units, the symbols for them, and what the numbers are for those different units. In the previous lesson, we were using information on page three for gravitational fields and some of the astronomy data. And now what we're taking a look at is, again, with the electric field here, we're taking a look really at just this one equation here. So the E with the arrow above it, that is the electric field strength. So previously, we calculated the gravitational field strength. And in this lesson, we'll calculate the electric field strength. Here we have a different constant. It's the Coulomb's constant, which is the lowercase k. Tells us that that is the 9 point, or 8.99 times 10 to the 9 newtons times meter squared per coulomb squared. Q, lowercase q, is the charge in coulombs that it gives us right here. Could be positive or negative charge. And R is the distance between the two charges that we're going to be talking about. So the radius or center to center distance. And in this case, it will be charges rather than masses. <clears throat> okay, so what we are going to see, fortunately, is, uh, yeah, it's very similar to with the gravitational fields with some differences. So in the case of the gravitational fields, that, of course, was a mass that was generating that field. And um, for the calculations, it's usually a fairly large mass that we are talking about, like the mass of a planet or the mass of a star that we're using with the calculations. In the case of the electric fields, the charge that we're talking about, they're usually really, really small for the charges. There's a different constant, as we just saw. So it's Coulomb's constant for the electric fields. It's a gravitational constant for the gravitational fields. So we saw that the gravitational constant, it was really, really small. That was the 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. So a really, really small number for that one. And I won't write the units here. For Coulomb's constant, it's a really, really big number. And it's the 8.99 times 10 to the 9. Okay, and again, I won't write the units. So really small number here, really big number here in terms of the constant. Uh, distance between the source and the object that it's influencing is usually huge with gravitational fields, like between different planets, possibly. And when we're talking about electric field, it's usually a very small distance that we are dealing with. This, um, again, is just a reminder of that gravitational equation, just so we can take a look at the parallels between this equation and the equation that we're going to be using for electric fields. Again, all of this straight from your data booklet. This is the symbol that we use for the electric field strength, the units that go along with it. Coulomb's constant. Again, really, really big number here. Um, source, there should be an R in here. Q is the uh, source of the charge in coulombs, and R is the distance between the different charges. So this is our equation that we have at the bottom here, and hopefully you realize that it's exactly the same arrangement and setup as what we saw with the gravitational field. Again, what's the difference? You have a different constant. Instead of a mass, we're talking about a charge, and it's still the distance between the two objects when we're using this equation. <clears throat> so let's just get right into a calculation for this one here. So calculate the distance is what we're asked for here. And let me just remind you again that we are using graphs, typically minus the P for paraphrase. So you need to show me all of the information. So what is the given information that we have first of all? Look for the numbers. This is a number that we have right here. And it says that that is our charge that we're talking about. So the charge, symbol for charge is Q. 
and we have that it's 3.0 times 10 to the negative 9. Again, really, really small for the charge that we're dealing with in terms of coulombs. We have another number here, electric field strength. We're given the electric field strength. So we're not calculating the electric field strength. We're actually given that, and that's 190 newtons per coulomb. Let's go to the equation, write down the equation that we're going to be using. So electric field strength is equal to Coulomb's constant times the charge divided by the distance between the charges squared. So even though it's not given here, remember that Coulomb's constant, it is a known, it is given because it is in your data booklet. So that's our 8.99 times 10 to the 9. And here I'll write down all of the units. So this is Newtons per meter squared per Coulomb squared. <clears throat> So for this equation here, we need to do some rearranging of this equation because what we're actually trying to find, the required information, is the distance. We're actually trying to find R. So when we rearrange this equation, so really, really quickly, I'm just going to write this over 1. So if I want to get rid of this electric field strength on the left-hand left side, I'm going to divide by it and then they cancel out. But if I do that on the left side, I need to do the same thing on the other side. I also need to divide by the electric field strength on that side. I wanna get rid of R on the left-hand side and move it over to the other side. How do I get rid of it? If I multiply by R squared, those cancel out. But because I did that on the right, I need to multiply the left by R squared. So let me tidy this up a little bit. We have R squared is equal to Coulomb's constant times the charge divided by the electric field strength. But we don't want R squared, we want R. So to get R, we're going to take the square root of R and then the square root of whatever is on the other side. So we want to take the square root of Coulomb's constant times this big dot here. When they write the big dot, it just means multiply um, times the charge divided by the electric field strength. Okay, so now we can go to plugging these numbers in. So I'm just going to do that over at the uh, side here. So we're going to have our big square root, Coulomb's constant, 8.99 times 10 to the 9. Newtons, write all the units down all the time, times meter squared divided by Coulomb squared. I'm going to put that in brackets. And I'm going to multiply that now by our charge, which is our plus 3.0 times 10 to the 9 coulombs. So we can cancel out the coulombs here with one of them in the denominator. And now we're going to divide this whole thing by our electric field strength, which is the 190 newtons per coulomb. Now I can cancel out that other Coulomb, and I can also cancel out the Newtons. The only thing that I'm left with is the meters squared, but we're going to be taking the square root of that. So the only thing I'm left with is meters, and that is what I want. That's what I'm asked to calculate is a distance, and the distance is in meters. So now it's just a matter of plugging all of this into your calculator. Don't forget to take the square root at the end, and what we end up for an answer is 0 0.3766 or you might be asked in centimeters and then you would just have to move the decimal um, over oops over a couple here to end up with uh, 37.7 centimeters all right so yes you may have to rearrange the equation like i have done here or you may simply have to solve for the electric field strength um, I'll also just uh, write here as well that when we were talking about the gravitational field strength, remember that the direction of the gravitational field strength is toward the center of a mass. So if this is our mass that we have here. The direction is always toward 
the center. In other words, it's always going to be uh, pulling. When we're talking about the electric fields, we might have same charges, we might have opposite charges, but the direction is always going to be from, and this is a little bit confusing, because positive charges are associated with protons, negative charges with electrons. It is electrons that are moving, but in terms of the electric field, you do need to know that it's always going from positive to negative. That is the direction of the electric field is positive to negative. And this is just a picture here that's showing um, electric eels. So they use electricity to navigate around in the dark. Um, or a catfish, actually, it might look like it is here. And also catching their prey. So the way that they loop around here, we have a positive charge at the head, a negative charge in the tail. And this very, very small distance that we have in here, because it is so small, that ends up creating a huge charge in between. And that's what's going to immobilize the fish that we do have here. Um, magnetic fields. So kind of quickly with magnetic fields, because there aren't any, any calculations that you need to do. So uh, magnets, they are metals that can attract other metals. Elements with strong magnetic properties, if you take a look on your periodic table, they quite often fit into these groups here. So just like with the other fields, it's the space around the source, and here the source is the magnet. So the space or, or sphere of influence around the magnet, that is what we do call the force, and that's where we have the magnetic field. So just like with electric fields, they can be attractive or repulsive. So for electric fields, opposite charges are going to repel. So these will repel, these will work, repel as well. Both of those will end up repelling. Opposite charges, they are going to attract, as are charges and neutral. So whether it's positive or negative, and if we do have a neutral, I'll just put in for neutral here, in for neutral, these are also going to attract. Okay, so opposites attract, and so do charges and neutrals. They're also going to attract. Kind of similar with the magnetic fields. They can be attractive or repulsive. And it's similar in, sen in the sense that uh, opposites are going to attract. And the same are going to repel. So with electric fields, yes, there are, of course, the positive and negative charges. With magnetic fields, they don't result from differences in charge. It does have to do with electrons and the orientation of the electrons. But really, all we need to kind of focus on for Science 30 is that magnets have poles. And those poles are referred to as the north and the south poles. And those are opposites. So all magnets, they are dipolar. They will all have a positive or all have a north pole and a south pole. So any magnet, whether it's a bar magnet or any other kind of magnet, there will be one portion of it, which will be the north. There will be another portion of it that will be the south. So the way that it works with the magnets is similar to the way that it works with the um, electric charges, the electric fields. Opposites attract, so north and south, they are attracted. If you bring the south ends of the poles together, they repel, and so do the north ones. So if we have two different magnets, this is north, this is south, and this magnet here, this is north, this is south, these ones will attract because we have the opposites that are close to each other. <coughs> if we draw this uh, first magnet exactly the same, where we have the north and the south, and our right hand magnet, we flip it around, and now this is south and this is north. Now we have the same poles, so those ones are going to end up repelling. I showed you what the field lines look like for gravitational and electric fields. So this is for the uh, magnetic fields. The magnetic field is always going to be north to south. Okay, and again, you need to know that. That's what this arrow is showing. It's always going from north to south. 
and that is the direction of the magnetic field lines. This is just showing a picture of uh, the Earth and kind of weird in that, of course, we know that, well, this is North America, this is South America that we're taking a look at here. So we call this the North Pole, we call this the South Pole, um, and, but the reason for that is when you use a compass, it's the south end that points toward north, opposites attract, and that's why we call it the North Pole. But if we take a look at the magnetic field lines, notice where they are going. They're following this as if it's a big bar magnet in the center of the Earth, and they're going from the north to the south. 